and I am uh, the user group facilitator for the Hawaii Tableau user group. Um, this is kind of an impromptu December meeting that we had because I learned that um, Brian, Hervey, and Kevin McKinney were going to be on island for a Salesforce event tomorrow on the 8th. So it's an all-day event. So if you want to go, they're going to be representing Tableau um, at this event. Um, and we want to welcome them. Um, and Kevin is presenting on one of my most favorite topics. I love mapping and geocoding and all that. So, um, but I just wanted to welcome them and I will turn it over to Brian to introduce Kevin to you all. Thank you. That's good, Dana. Thanks again. Thanks for facilitating this on really short notice. I'll, for, for anybody that might be interested uh, in the Salesforce event, if, if you're not aware, Tableau is part of Salesforce. We're doing an innovation day tomorrow at the Entrepreneur Sandbox um, close to downtown. If you haven't been there, it's a pretty cool facility. Uh, we'll be there all day. I'll, I'll post the, the um, agenda in the chat window. I did post already. If you have questions, please don't hesitate. I'm going to be monitoring it and I will interrupt Kevin if, uh, if it makes sense to make sure that he looks at it and answers questions. Uh, we, we, this is gonna take about maybe 40, 45 minutes for the presentation part. And then we've committed uh, or dedicated some time to Q and A. Um, for those that we haven't met, uh, Kevin and I are the specific Tableau team assigned to our state and local government customers here locally. Um, so we work with the state, we work with uh, the city and county, we work with other counties on, on the neighbor islands, and um, we obviously have peers that work probably with you if you're uh, if you're not in the public sector. If you have any questions about how to get a hold of anybody from Tableau, I'm happy to facilitate that. But without further ado, I'll turn the time over to Kevin. Kevin is uh, um, at least in our world a longtime employee of Tableau. He's a senior solutions engineer, principal solutions engineer, as it says there which means he's the brains of the outfit, the smart guy, and uh, the, the topic I think you'll find pretty interesting. So Kevin, take it away. Thank you, Brian. Um, uh, and thank you everyone for uh, taking the time to attend this webinar. Uh, this topic, uh, Tableau Mapping Deep Dive, covers a lot of different information. And despite the, the title Deep Dive, uh, the material that we're gonna cover over the next 40, 45 minutes um, is both uh, an introduction, a primer, and includes some really useful uh, techniques, tools, and resources. So anybody who does anything with location data, geospatial data, things like that, can probably get something valuable out of this. Um, so this, uh, this webinar was developed by one of our mapping subject matter experts, my uh, friend and colleague, Ross Paulson. Uh, I invite you all to check out Ross and my uh, Tableau uh, public sites if you want to learn, uh, take a look at some of the resources we're going to be seeing in here, as well as some other resources. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Tableau Mapping Deep Dive. So I want to start this out with one of those um, laws of the internet, as it were. Uh, this one's called Clapper's Law. In 2004, uh, the then director of the National Imagery and Mapping Agency, or NEMA, uh, James R. Clapper said, everything and everybody has to be somewhere. And with that context in mind, um, all of that data, all of that information about uh, who is where and what is where is the subject of our conversation today. Um, before we start diving into uh, the opportunity ahead here, uh, we want to tell you a little bit more about Tableau. It's important to understand some of this history uh, as it's been pivotal not only to setting our vision and mission, but ultimately drives the platform that we deliver today. Uh, we have a different focus and dedication than all of our competitors. And you can see that shine through the capabilities our platform delivers, as well as the value we can provide to your organization. 
Uh, Tableau has always been focused on one thing, people. We believe that people are our greatest asset and data, that uh, this data that you spend millions of dollars capturing, curating, cleaning, and storing can be used to make your people even more valuable. If you can get the data into the hands of the people who know the business, that's when the magic happens. That's when their creativity and curiosity get awakened. They use facts to support their intuition. They see opportunities in your business that have never been seen before. They become more engaged. And they drive your organization forward. This has been the fuel behind the inception of Tableau and continues to drive us today. We are 100% focused on helping people see and understand their data. And this includes our people uh, within your organizations, helping them see and understand your data. Tableau's always been about answering data questions, period. Over time, our customers' questions became more spatial in nature, along with everything else. With every release, Tableau added new capabilities to enable customers use, uh, uh, to answer these questions with spatial context. So let's talk a little bit about the history of where mapping has come from in Tableau. Tableau added mapping capabilities in version four back in 2008. Since then, Tableau development has made additions to spatial capabilities over the last 28, 29 releases. So this is what mapping looked like in version four. And this is what people are doing with mapping in Tableau today. All kinds of new and creative ways of applying that technique. So let's talk about some of these features. This viz shows the developmental history of Tableau's spatial capabilities. This foundational group is the basics. It's points, it's chloropleth maps, it's what you need to have a foundational uh, mapping capability in an analytics. Then we have the connectivity period where we are uh, en enabling connection to spatial files and joining and established um, uh, new connections like shape files, KML files, et cetera. And as we look uh, at the current phase that we're in, we're expanding functionality um, to allow for conversions of different types of data, uh, more connectivity, more capabilities. And we'll go into those functions during the rest of this presentation. A couple of notable uh, uh, versions, the uh, point maps added in version four, chloropleth maps in version seven, our map box integration uh, in version 9.2, and spatial formats in 10.2. Uh, spatial joins uh, intersects were added in 2018.2. And density heat maps were added in 2018.3. Uh, uh, in 2019.2, make point and make line uh, calculations enabled us to uh, convert uh, uh, latitude and longitude context into spatial data for uh, combining those data types together with other spatial data types. Uh, distance calculations were added in 2019.3 and buffers in 2020.1. Uh, area uh, calculations were added in 2021.2. Uh, uh, 
In addition to that, in 2020.4, we added map layers. So now you were no longer confined to just two layers of geospatial data, but can have as many different layers of geospatial data as you wanted. So that we can pull all of the context together, just like you would expect to do from more complex tools like Esri in Tableau. So that now when we talk about uh, feature, feature functionality and capability, it's no longer, I only have two axes of observation. I can have as many as I need. Let's start with one of the most core functions to Tableau's geospatial capabilities, out of the box geocoding. When you connect to data, Tableau reads that data and determines what type of data you're dealing with. Some of that data is geospatial in nature. Tableau just figures it out. In most cases, you have more spatial data than you think. Tableau uses uh, dozens, uh, a dozen or so geocodes to enable you to map uh, data from text. Pretty simple. When you connect to data, Tableau reads the data and determines what type of data uh, you're dealing with. Some, uh, here we can see it's automatically identified county, city, state, postal code, region as geo, uh, uh, geographic objects. Let's look at this data in the US. If you drag out state in Tableau, you'll build a map. You can even have a regional perspective, just drop region on color. And now you see states are colored by their regional affiliation. If you take measures such as profit or count and drop it on color, you can show which states have the highest profits. Using Tableau layer capabilities, add cities and add sales measures to size to see other free attentive attributes jump out. Very quickly, you can see the top five or so cities that have good sales. Now add profit to color on those cities and you'll have size by sales and color by profit this is all coming from text files. No need to find maps, background imagery, US maps. Tableau just builds it. Let's talk a little bit now about the background maps. The wonderful thing about Tableau's mapping capabilities is just how simple and quick it is to create a map. You don't need to be a lifelong geospatial analyst or know what GIS means to build a map. Here we have uh, uh, the background map layers. We've got light, normal, dark, the street view or outdoor view, satellite maps. We can even work offline with um, maps that you uh, that we can pull and have um, downloaded into your servers or no background map at all. Uh, let's take a look uh, at spatial formats. Spatial formats are data sets related to or containing information about a specific location on the Earth's surface. They come in the form of points, lines, and polygons. Here we have a polygon of Kilauea lava flow that took out hundreds of homes and structures on the Big Island between May and August of 2018. Uh, we've got uh, an equally interesting Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa eruption going on right now, and the data that we'll collect from that is going to be helpful in informing a number of different uh, visualizations as well. Um, so that's polygons. Uh, points can be any kind of location 
In this case, we have uh, the USGS water quality and stream stations. Most often, uh, most often we think of lines as roads or rivers, but in this case, um, scientists can track migratory animals and look at patterns of travel or other things. Spatial joins. Now, spatial joins are uh, the technique that we use to combine spatial data on the access of where things are in common. After Tableau built con the connectivity to bring spatial formats in, customers wanted to link those files together. In this use case, we have that lava flow from Kilauea and want to know how many structures were destroyed by that lava flow. Using spatial joins, we use the geometry of the spatial file to join the data sets. In this case, we've got the uh, Kilauea 2018 lava flow uh, chronology from the um, US Geological Service and uh, Hawaiian building location data. We use an intersect uh, as the join type for this. Um, the first release was basically a point to polygon. What points were inside of a polygon? But now you can pretty much do all kinds of combinations, points associated with line, points and points, polygon to polygon, line to polygon, et cetera. Here's a more advanced example uh, from what we were previously looking at. Uh, these capabilities are enabled by uh, functionality that's existed since 2022.3, including um, uh, spatial intersect types and map layers. If I do a left join with the lava to all the buildings, roads, and land parcels is what we're seeing over to the left. We can see which buildings are uh, which buildings are inside of the lava flow marked in red. I layer all the buildings and roads for context. In this way, we're able to see all of the. Uh, all of the buildings, roads, and parcels that were affected by this event, and those that were not affected. And here we can see the different, the, the sort of data source that we're using as the origin point, the Kilauea data source, that's the, the left join. And all of the all of the uh, data tables that have been uh, connected to this to create the visualization that you're seeing behind you. So that those other data sources are providing the other visual elements in the um, context of this data. So why do we need shape files? Spatial files gives the user the ability to start precise measurements. The gray map at the bottom comes from out of the box Tableau geocoding and should be used for displaying content, but not necessarily for doing measurements. As you can see, the um, geospatial objects are less accurate. They're a bit more, um, there are fewer uh, vectors in our polygon to allow for the shape. And so you miss out on some of the more discrete details. Here you see them overlaid on top of each other to see exactly how these, um, these two different types of polygons differ. 
One of them is going to be more accurate. One of them is going to be more performant. Having precise spatial files will allow users to find where data is spatially. This example shows which New York boroughs an aircraft is flying over in its approach to the New York LaGuardia Airport. The tableau out of the box boundary shapes are meant for visual graphics, not precise measurements. Precise intersections. We want, in this case, we want to flight, we want to find flights that cross into Canadian airspace. Let's look at this route between San Francisco and Boston. Here we have roughly 120 flights crossing the US. Uh, we notice that the route probably crosses over Canadian airspace. What if we want to know which flights cross Canadian, uh, what cross into Canada and for how long? Uh, different airlines, our airlines have pay royalties to enter and use Canadian airspace. Using spatial joints, we can take the Canadian airspace shape file and find points that occur inside of that boundary. Geometry on the left is from the airspace and make point is used to convert the text data into a geometry. Here you can see we're using that make point calculation as the um, intersecting object. So make point, what is it and why is it important? Uh, make point is a function that will allow you to use latitude and longitude fields in a spatial joint. Spatial joins allow you to use points and polygons to join data sets based on their spatial relationship. And make point is the function that can make points. Another way to think about this function is that it turns non-spatial data sources like text files and Excel tables into spatial data sources that allow you to spatially aggregate spatial data. Once we establish the ability to generate spatial data, we can um, do a whole lot more with these functions once they've been converted into a more uh, spatial data type. Such as leveraging the capabilities of our distance and bu uh, buffer uh, calculations. So let's talk about a couple of these other um, geospatial uh, functions, such as make law. MakeLine is useful for connecting locations. It's a lot easier to do now than it used to be. Previously, we'd have to add in whole columns of data in order to uh, associate one point with another, and now it's much easier. The straight line represents how users have to, uh, had to connect locations in previous versions. It was a one-to-one -one relationship, a direct linear connection. It required duplicating rows with data, uh, data and a path ID. Now make line the geometry function referencing one geometry location to another. In this case, both the location of San Francisco and Boston are geometries that can be connected. You also notice that it generates an arc rather than a straight line. This is how this data would actually be represented based on the curvature of the earth. In this case, we have the geospatial locations of San Francisco as a data column and Boston as a data column. 
This could also equally be the origin and destination or um, other representations of this data. But um, this, uh, this functionality is just as, just as simply a, uh, a function of the latitude and longitude for two columns of data. Uh, when talking about distance, uh, obviously calculates the distance between two points. With this function, Tableau makes it super easy to find this measure, and it wasn't always easy. Initially, you'd need to use a long calculation to find the distance. The reason for this is because we essentially place locations on an X and Y grid. That's where Tableau mapping started. And you needed to use an equation like this to find the x and y, the, the x and y distance uh, between them. Frankly, uh, I haven't taken trigonometry since high school, and I don't tend to like engage with it in my professional life. But make line and distance are allowing us to do these things so much more easily. Using make line, we can visualize the distance between these two locations. And using destination, we can define the, um, uh, the specific distance based on a, uh, a variety of different um, uh, measurement types. Uh, we have miles listed here, but we could also just as easily use kilometers or uh, other uh, calculation types. It's pretty easy. Uh, Buffer is another really useful uh, function that's been added. Buffer calculations allow users to do a few things with their locations. Uh, in the first instance, obviously, we can draw a circle around points at a certain specific distance, in this case, 30 miles. In this case, now I want to catch some data. I want all airports within 30 miles of my large airports. Let's step through uh, using a few layers. One, I have all of the airports from a CSV. I've uh, used make point to convert their latitude and longitude locations. Large airports comes from a different CSV. Uh, that I filtered and exported. So that's these locations here. Finally, I want to create a buffer ring around those large airports of 30 miles. And that creates this new circle that surrounds each airport. To get the airports inside of the 30 mile buffer zone, I set the buffer intersections, uh, I set a buffer intersection um, uh, join with all of the other airports using a calculation of the buffer of the uh, locations of the airports uh, within 30 miles of the large airports that intersect with all of the other airports. The orange dart dots are the result of that buffer intersection, airports inside of the 30 mile buffer. Effectively, what we've done is we've created a new polygon out of these buffers and then overlaid or looked for the intersection of these points with that polygon. Custom background. Sometimes you want to show specific map backgrounds or you just want to take your work to the next level. There are two ways of using custom map backgrounds. WMS, which are maps that are served up elsewhere for your use, and Mapbox. Mapbox enables you to build maps and use them in Tableau. 
you can set up a free account at Mapbox, uh, build a map in the studio, and publish that map for use in Tableau. So here we have um, what it looks like to add maps and, and what WMMS maps and other map layers allow you to do. Here I've connected to a WMS map and it gives me a variety of different layers which I can use as the background for my map. I can also increase or decrease the, the washout to determine how visible the image is in the background, just like I can do with my out of the box custom or my out of the box map layers that we looked at earlier. For WMS maps or the web map service interface standard, um, these maps are, uh, are hosted on a server and all you need is a simple HTTP interface for requests from their uh, registered maps. And then you can use them um, as your background. These are great resources if you have to host your, uh, your dashboards in an offline environment, or if you need specific or unique maps like forestry maps or other kinds of uh, maps, um, uh, uh, geological maps, other things like that. If you want to create maps in Mapbox, you can create maps in their studio and integrate them into Tableau. Here's how. Publish your map, then click share. Uh, scroll down to the developer resources and click third party and select Tableau and copy the URL. In Tableau desktop, uh, you'll go to the maps menu uh, and select background maps and add, a, uh, add map box. You'll need to name it something, it can be anything, then paste the URL you got from the in, uh, integration URL in Mapbox. If you want to save it as a TMS file, a background map, you can go to Manage Maps under uh, the Maps and Background Maps in Mapbox and um, hover over the map uh, box URL. You'll see Export come up. This creates a file that you can drag and drop into desktop anytime you need it. A nice way to leverage other folks' cool maps too, because you can get somebody, uh, if somebody else has published something really cool um, on Mapbox, you can leverage that resource as well. So I wanted to uh, take this next sort of portion of the presentation to talk about a couple of different ways that people are using mapping to map um, like facilities and physical infrastructure and other things that are not quite like global in their scale. Um, so in this example, during the early days of the pandemic, as hospitals were filling up, local emergency management teams converted convention centers like the New Orleans Convention Center uh, into hospitals. Being able to map floor space was useful to see where to put uh, uh, beds or manage the flow of supplies. Uh, to build this, we can bring in a background map an image of the location and find uh, and use that image to define the dimensions of the building. Here we see we're doing the same thing with a uh, with an aircraft where we're mapping the location of all of the seats in, uh, on the aircraft. Now, using this together with other um, visualization data like our bar chart here, it helps us to understand the percentage of seat ratios or other things like that. 
Now, sometimes we need to clean up our data, uh, our geospatial data, just like we have to clean up other data. In this example, um, I'm going to be using Tableau Prep Builder uh, to leverage its geospatial capabilities as well. Now, Tableau Prep, Prep Builder is the uh, Tableau uh, data cleaning and data connectivity tool. It comes along with Tableau Desktop uh, in the creator license. There's a whole host of, um, of geospatial capabilities associated with Tableau Prep, just like there are in Tableau Desktop. Here we want to um, gather some data from NOAA uh, about a hurricane that is going to be hitting Florida. In this case, we can gather um, wind speed data uh, in a couple of different packages from NOAA. We've got 34 knots, 50 knots, 64 knots um, from NOAA. What we want to do is we want to take all of that data, that uh, wind speed data, and um, create a union of all of those data tables and then export that union as a uh, data file for us to connect to in Tableau. During this cleaning step, we're also uh, changing up the names. We're gathering data from the, the table name to inform the data that's in our uh, data set. So in this case, we've got the, uh, the table name itself is composed of the date that the data was collected, the wind speed uh, context, and, um, and we're actually taking that information and splitting it out to create data elements that we can use, such as the date, the time, the wind speed, et cetera. So we've created a whole data table just out of table names uh, that we've uh, unioned together from NOAA. Now we can do this for multiple days or multiple hours to create a more complex um, time series uh, analysis of this storm as it's tracking towards Florida. And this allows us to create a chart like this, where we can um, select the specific wind speed that we want to map. And we can also see the general direction and tone of uh, interaction with a variety of different facilities in, or in this case, cities in Florida. So if we want to generate a map that looks kind of like this in, uh, in Tableau, we can build that from the data resources in, um, in Tableau. In this example here, we're actually getting the storm prediction data, just like we were getting the wind speed data from the National Weather Service. We're pulling each of these data tables and uh, bringing them into Tableau. In this case, we're actually able to leverage the uh, Esri, uh, the Esri ArcGIS server connection uh, to connect to this data directly because uh, the National Weather Service publishes this connectivity. And from there, we can extract that, those data files for the next 24 hours. So we've covered a lot of information about Tableau's mapping capabilities. We've looked at the history of the development of the tool. We've looked at the various different types of geospatial data that we can connect to, how we connect to it using uh, uh, geospatial connections and intersects. We've talked about the different types of functions and uh, layers that we're able to leverage inside of Tableau. In addition to that, there's a number of different um, there's a number of different folks that have contributed greatly to uh, the knowledge and resources that we have available around this topic. Uh, Sarah Battersby is the undisputed mapping queen here at Tableau and has published a lot of really great blogs and Tableau public resources. 
Uh, Ross Paulson is the head of our internal geospatial champions team and himself has a lot of really great resources. And Tableau Tim uh, has published a couple of really cool videos about mapping on his YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much for the time that you've given us today to talk about this topic. Um, there's lots and lots of different use cases that we can build out of from the building blocks that we've talked about today. Um, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions that you all might have um, based on what you've seen so far. Kevin, I think everybody can probably see both Dean and I posted in the chat window. If you have questions, feel free to post them in there or raise your hand so that we can uh, get to your questions. Um, there's a lot of links and great resources inside of this um, presentation. Uh, I am happy to share this resource with uh, Dana so that uh, she can share it with the rest of the Tableau user group. Uh, so I'll make this, uh, this resource available to everyone. If you want to go click around in the links and, and see uh, what's underneath some of the stuff that we've talked about today. That sounds great, Kevin. Thank you so much. Um, we're not having anybody with questions. I haven't seen anything come in on Q&A, and I don't see anybody raising their hands. But I was just curious, what um, what had you working on the lava flow in Kilauea? Because that's pretty relevant to what's going on right now with um, Mauna Loa, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Um... So that was an that was an interesting use case, um, and um, my colleague Ross actually uh, built that resource in support of a uh, an effort that the U.S. Geological Service was doing back in 2018. Um, but the capabilities that uh, have been made available today make the process of doing what the USGS was requesting and was much more experimental four or five years ago. Uh, much, much easier to do today. Um, so that process that I illustrated of, um, of showing the overlapping layers of, of Tableau was, was very challenging to do back in 2018, but, but now we can do something like that. So I actually have spoken with uh, some of the uh, state emergency response folks about this topic uh, just recently, <laughs> and uh, they were very intrigued by this example when I showed it to them. So we may actually be using some of these resources for the Mauna Loa event that's going on right now. Kevin, you got a nice comment in there from Jan. Thank you, Jan. Um, I, I encourage everybody, if you haven't thought about applying Tableau to the where questions and your business problems to give it a shot. Um, this is a uh, deceptively easy uh, capability set. Uh, once you start to uh, play with the building blocks and sort of recognize what Tableau is capable of. And the solution engineer teams associated with your uh, organization, folks like me, are happy to help you uh, sort of uncover some of those capability sets. I myself also sit on the uh, Tableau Geospatial Champions team, and together the Champions team works to augment all of those um, uh, engineers to help support your accounts, no matter what type of account it might be. Just so everyone's aware, Dana did post her email address if you'd like a copy of the recording. 
uh, or a copy, obviously, of this slide deck with these links, please reach out to her at the email address she provided in the chat window. And I think with that, let's go ahead and call it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time today, Brian and Kevin. Um, youth group members, please um, stay tuned. We have for first quarter next year, we're planning on having some biz games. Um, and I'm getting with uh, another uh, rep with Tableau to hopefully host that. And then uh, in Q2, we're kind of planning tentatively um, some higher education topics to be presented on. So um, thank you all for attending and we'll catch you at the next event. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you all.